I tell you what is funny that I've discovered with ACX, right? Yeah. You put when you become a, a an audiobook producer, as they call them. Yeah. You you put sample audio on the site, okay. so that if authors don't want to just open pitch they can go they can put some criteria in and it will give them a load of producers and play their samples right. now the way I do it is when you do an audio book you have to record it or you have to take a piece of it to be the retail sample so that when you go on audible.com you can click and listen to a bit of it well I usually just take that and put it on my sample so every time I do a book I put a new sample on because they're all different genres now I've done business books sci-fi regency romance you know all you know so that when someone's looking for say romance or sci-fi they'll put that in and, and my thing will come up and they can listen to a bit of me you can also search by accent <laughs> I can't I suppose that makes that makes sense makes yeah. yeah um so I've just been having so much fun listening at people doing accents that are not their own. And the reason why I've been doing this is because I've done a few now where I've done different accents. Now, the first one I did was a book. It was an 18-hour book about um, a, a cry, gangsters and policemen in Liverpool. And I ended up doing at least 30 characters and around 20 of them were all Scousers. So I had to find 20 different Scouse accents. Um, so wow. they don't know it, but all of my family are now policemen or gangsters because that's who I did. <laughs> 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 um, so once I'd done that, then I started going a bit further and I'm currently doing a, a romance book a filthy romance book, actually. Oh, no. Um, and both of the characters are American, and oh. there is no narrator. They they narrate each part. So he does a chapter, right. then she does a chapter. And I'm doing, you know... Yeah. I, I'm American in the whole thing. Wow. But I've also auditioned for a couple of Scottish ones, but I don't know if I'll get them. Yeah, because you're quite good with the Scot Scots accents, aren't you? I've so you those before. so I, got, I got thinking about, well, you know... Let's hear some of the other accents. Would you like to hear some of the samples? These are completely at random. I don't know what you're going to hear. Would you like to hear yes, some? Yes, please. I'd love to. Yeah. Okay, so I've picked Australian, okay, first. So you know what an Australian accent... I mean, I lived in Australia for a long time. Let's hear what this was. Now, we might get an Australian, which is no fun. But we might strike gold and we might get an American trying to do an Australian, which is <laughs> just comedy platinum. Okay, let's see what this one is. I'm not going to name these uh, these producers on the right. Nice. Moving over to the continent of Australia. So it's an American. Out of sound sound changing the world. Out of sound headset operation guide. Australian accent. Out of sound headset operation guide. Number one, the microphone boom of an out of sound headset is very flexible to bend to make sure the proper placement. <laughs> bend and place the boom about one to two fingers of width away from your mouth and at the corner of your mouth. If the microphone is too close to your mouth, it may cause distortion and pick up unwanted sounds like breathing, lip smacking, and swallowing. If it is too far away from your mouth, isn't that great? You will have low more imp like Norwegian. <laughs> yeah. So, do you want to try a few others? That's a few... not alive. This is alive. Yeah. yeah. So let's try. Let's try a different accent. Let's try. Let's see what we've got here. It's clicked to any. Uh, should we try British Liverpool? Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Now, hopefully, mine will come up here. Um, because of that book I did. Um, let's see if I'm on here. Yes, I am. Do you want to hear a quick bit of mine first? Go on then. Okay, yeah. so I'm I'm the narrator, but I'm also in this one. I think I'm two policemen. So notice how I do two Scouse accents, but they're different people. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's true. Okay. So, but I'm also the narrator. Rogers was feeling frustrated as there didn't appear to be any pattern to any of this, nothing to hang anything on, no threads. Pacing up and down the office, 
He ran through everything they knew so far, occasionally stopping to scribble on a whiteboard. We know Mike Bradley was at the house, sometime on Saturday. We also know two men chased after him. He turned to Sergeant Clark and asked, How are we getting on with the description of the two men? Only what we already know. One white male, tall, about six foot, well built, bald, possibly shaved head. The witness said he looked like a bouncer, like the ones you see in the clubs in town. His word, sir, the other one looked like Bob Marley. Bob Marley? <laughs> Bob Marley, the reggae singer, sir. Jesus Christ, I know who Bob Marley is. Can't we come up with something more substantial? <laughs> okay. So you get the idea, right? So that yeah, was... that's good. Okay. Good. They all sound different, don't they? That's clever. Yeah. Let's see if I can find... Uh... All right. So this one, so this one, I think this is an American trying to do Liverpool accent. We sit off in a slow roll mainly because Nate's two speeds are crawl or dead when he's behind the wheel. We followed the road for about a mile before Nate brought the pickup to a dead stop. Shit, he briefed. There was a big ass wooden gate just set off from this tiny country road, a good eight feet tall, mounted on columns. How is that even close? I mean. <laughs> She must have seen the Beatles interviews. Yeah, it's not like there's no reference point for an American with a Liverpool accent. I mean, if you yeah. said to an American, can you do a Peterborough accent, they'd probably have trouble. But Liverpool? Yeah. yeah. But what was no. that? One was a white poodle. And she was so brilliant. I mean, that dog, she knew what you were thinking about before you even thought about it yourself. Before I'd come home at night, do you know what that dog would do? She'd flip on the electric fire, pull the curtains and have my slippers and a bottle of beer waiting by my chair. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sounds more Australian. Cockney. Oh. The last dream of the old oak. In the forest, high up on the steep shore and not far from the open sea coast, stood a very old oak tree. It was just 365 yeah, years supposed old. supposed to be cockney. But that long time was to the tree as the same number of days might be to us. We wake by day and sleep by night, and then we have our dreams. It's different with the tree. It's obliged to keep awake through that three seasons Chinese, of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Does not no, he's any... definitely gone to the Dick Van Dyke school of uh, <laughs> Cockney pronunciation. He's about to break into Chim Chimney, isn't he? 